Today's Bible passage, Mark chapter 6, 1 to 6, it points to a key issue that all communities and groups face. It's even something that we as, as in our own families face, something that we all have seen in our lives. People unable to do or see the truth. They can't see it. Why? Because of pride, envy, anger, jealousy, or any other sin that you can name. So we take and we look at what happened. Jesus goes to Nazareth, to his own hometown. People know him, and he goes to do and preach and all that he's done in all other places. People have heard, hey, Jesus did this. And they go, we remember him. He's the carpenter. He's the son of Mary. And so the question is, do they believe that he is the Messiah? Yes or no? Did, he, did they believe? No? No, they didn't, right? They did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Have you ever wondered why it was they didn't believe? Why was it that they didn't believe? The church fathers and like St. John Chrysostom, he notes the, Na the Nazarenes, those who are from Nazareth, their knowledge of Jesus' humble origins made it difficult for them to accept his divinity. Made it difficult for them to accept his divinity. Jesus' humble origins were their same humble origins. And, you know, you think about it, right? If you, if you put yourself in their shoes, right? Like, um, if one day, you know, you, you, kids, you, one day one of your classmates, uh, you know, becomes president of the United States. You go, oh, that person wasn't that. He, that person was terrible at this subject and was always a mean person, you know? Or imagine this, right? Like, like, say that you were living in Los Angeles back, like, what, like 40 years ago, and you pulled up to a McDonald's, and it's Kamala Harris, who's now the, your, your, the person saying, how can I help you? <laughs> I mean, you look at what, you know, where people come from, and you think, that person's not that great. We do this ourselves, right? We do this ourselves when we look at our, our own people from the Malayali community and say, oh, that's that person's from the same hometown as me. There's nothing big important about them. Jesus' humble origins were their same humble origins. And so they thought, how can he be, be the Messiah? He's not better than me. When we think he's not better than me, what sin are we doing? What's the sin called? What's the name of that sin? Who knows? The name of that sin is pride. Pride. Pride is one of the most destructive sins. Pride is the type of sin that grabs us and we can't let go. You know, a perfect analogy I, I recently learned is, have you ever heard of monkey traps? Anyone heard of monkey traps? So there's, there's, there's like old cultures where they have to like trap the monkey because the monkey will come into and steal the food right so what they did was they would put um like a jar or like a, a hollowed out coconut and they would cut a hole into the coconut large enough for the hand of the monkey to go in and inside the coconut or inside the jar they would have some type of treat maybe some rice maybe some nuts maybe some fruit and so the hand of the monkey would go into that, into that jar or into that coconut and grab, try to grab the food. But when it closes its fist to grab and hold the food and take it out, its hand is not, the hole is not big enough for his hand to come out with the item inside of it. You know what happens? The monkey's trapped. Because the monkey will not let go of that food, that bait, that trap. And so now, because he won't let go, he's stuck. And so then they can capture the monkey and put it away so that it doesn't you know, steal from them. And so this is, the thing about it is, <laughs> I'm not saying this, but I, we are very much like the monkey. The monkey is holding on to something 
and is trapped because it's holding on to it. We do this with our own relationships. This is what pride does to us. We become prideful about something, or another's type of sin of pride is jealous or envious or angry about something, and we don't let it go. Let me give you a moment. Just really, honestly, think about this. Have you ever had this happen to you? Children, you have definitely had this happen, especially if you have a sibling. Your sibling gets something, and what happens? Your sibling gets a present or a toy or gets some praise from the parents, and you become, what, upset because you are envious of the other person. And so you hold on, and you, start, you, get, you get angry, and you fight, right? We do this too. All adults, all people, we look at something else and become prideful about it, envious about it, jealous about it, and we hold on to it. And then what happens? In our community, in your families, how many are there that don't talk to each other? How many are there that are not in good relationship with someone else? And what is at the heart of it? We're stuck to the monkey trap. St. James, the first bishop of Jerusalem, he wrote, wrote in the book, in the Bible, James chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? They are desires battling within us. You desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. Now, does Jesus want us divided? Does he want us not in good relationship with each other? Yes or no? No, he wants us to be united. We are one. In, we, 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 we will show that we are followers of Christ by our love, not by our division. He tells us to love our neighbors, and not just to love our neighbors, to love who? Who is the hardest person to love, and he tells us to love them? Who is it? Love our enemies. To love our enemies. The problem for the monkey is that monkey doesn't recognize that there's a simple fix for him to get out of the trap. What's the simple fix for the monkey to get out of the trap? Let go. We are holding on just like the monkey. We're holding on to our pride. We are holding on, you know, the easiest way to say this is, we are holding on the desire to be right. I want to be right. I want to be the person who's, who's, who, who, who knows everything. We hold on to it, and then we're trapped. But Jesus says, let go. Let go of that sin. That's the simple fix. See, the thing is, we call Jesus one thing. He is our Savior. So the question for you is, is he not your savior? Is he not your redeemer? And if he is your savior and redeemer, you go to him and say, I'm trapped by this sin. I can't let go of it. Jesus is the simple fix to help us to let go of that sin. But some anger, some jealousy, some envy, some drama is very hard to forgive. Maybe someone, a friend, family member, someone, created some very big problem for you. But if we go to God sincerely asking to help for us, to, for him to help us to let go of that bait of sin, then through Christ we will be freed from that sin, from that trap. So do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus has the ability to unite us who were once broken, to heal us, to free us from our, the, the slavery of sin? Do you, or do you think that the problem that you have, that, you know, I'm angry with this person and that anger is so much, do you think that anger is more than God's power? Do not be like the Nazareans, those of Nazareth who didn't believe Jesus. Believe. Believe like Mary. See, the Nazarenes, the, the, those from Nazareth, they saw Jesus, and what, did, what was the sin that held them? The sin of pride. He can't be better than me. 
He's from the same hometown. He can't be the Messiah. Him and I, I'm better than him, they think. That was the sin of pride. But Mary, Mary was different, right? She, but what she had was the opposite of pride. She had, what's the word of the opposite of pride? Humility. She had humility. She had humility, and the pride of sin could not find root in her because of her humility. The thing is, the truth is, none of us are like Mary because we are all prideful. We are not humble. And the thing is, if we are prideful, if we are not like Mary, if we are ones who are not humble, I will tell you one thing. It means that we're spiritually blind. Pride is in every single one of our lives. Every single one of us is pride, has pride in our lives. That means if we have pride, that means that we are stuck in the monkey trap and we don't even realize it. Today's message is a reminder to take time to analyze yourself. Spend some time in, in introspection to see what you are holding on to. What type of monkey traps are trapping you? I can easily spot people stuck in monkey traps. You know, I can easily spot them. It's usually when someone will complain about someone or something, but they don't take any responsibility or think they've done anything wrong. <laughs> it, you ever, you, you've seen, everyone's seen this, right? Someone who, and maybe it's us ourselves because, again, we're spiritually blind. They'll say, that person did all this wrong. I, how many times have I heard husbands and wives come and complain to me? Or brothers and sisters complain? Or our friends complain? And they'll say, this person, they did all this, they did all of this wrong. And it's all their fault. And I simply ask, did you do anything in, to make that happen? Oh, I, I didn't do anything. That is all their fault. And I immediately know <laughs> pride has them trapped. So my brothers and sisters, think about it. If ever you think this other person is wrong and I am in the right, ask yourselves, are you stuck in the monkey trap? If you're not taking responsibility for the situation that you are in, then you definitely are. We need to drop our desire to be right in order to save ourselves. We are all victims of the monkey trap, and there's no time like today to let go. Jesus preached repent, and he's telling us, let go of that anger, let go of that envy, let go of that jealousy, let go of the sin. Don't be foolish and think that you have done nothing wrong. Only Christ is without sin. So let us drop the sin that is living in our own hands and open up our hands and seek our Christ, our Savior, to redeem us. All glory and honor to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit.